Here's another handy boat coat tip. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm making up a bezel for a um, temperature gauge for my refrigerator on my boat. I've laminated a piece of silky oak to uh, oak, uh, which is uh, glued together with some perb on. And the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to seal it with the boat coat. So I'm going to show you some tricks to speed up things and get a really good result that looks like varnish just using your boat coat. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to nuke our uh, piece of timber. I'm going to get it hot. And the reason for that is it'll do two things. When it, as it heats up, it's going to expel air and moisture. And the second one is it's going to set our epoxy off really fast. So I want to get in and get this finished today. And the way to do it is stick it in the microwave. So I'm going to start out here. We'll do a minute. Let's nuke it for a minute and that'll be really hot by the time it's finished. Next step I've uh, poured uh, 20 ml of boat coat and I'm going to nuke that too. I want that just warm to touch because it makes it much more fluid, the hardener mixes into it easier and it'll um, spread a lot easier with a lot less air bubbles. So that's next step. So let's nuke it. Alright, I've set the microwave on 5 seconds to give our uh, boat coat a zap. I've just pulled our bezel out, it's almost too hot to touch, that's how hot it got uh, and that's great because as it cools down it's going to want to draw in air and moisture instead we're going to be punching boat coat in it and it'll suck it in and make it really dense uh, and, and plus it'll set the boat coat off fairly fast so I'll be able to put the next coat on in probably 15 minutes instead of an hour, hour and a half so really neat way to speed up your process Now if I've done this right, that boat coat will be, the resin will be just warm when I pull it out of there. And what we do, once we pull it out, we let it sit for at least the length of time it's in there. And yeah, I can feel that's got some warmth to it, it's just enough. And so always let it sit the length of time you had it in the microwave, and it makes it very fluid. Works a treat. Next step we're going to add our hardener. And I'm using non-yellowing hardener and I'm down at bench height and that's important because you, you're at an angle you'll overdose it or underdose it and notice I'm just using a measure cup and it's pretty hard to see this because I got resin over my mark but I know where it is so I just slowly top him up till we get to 30 mil Wemo, there we are. And I just scrape back with a paddle pop stick until I expose the 30 mil mark. Oh, we could do it a little bit more. That's just there actually. So we're a little bit underdone. So we'll put a little bit more hardener in. Just a tad. If anything, be slightly sly on the, uh, shy on the hardener. Uh, because too much hardener cuts down on the tensile strength of your epoxy uh, and plus you're wasting hardener. Adding extra hardener won't set it off any faster. And then we're going to mix that in. But I'm going to add a little bit of TPRDA to that before I mix it in. The reason I'm going to add TPRDA is so that our boat coat is a little bit more fluid again. TPRDA is a very dilute form of resin Right, you add that at about 20% so we just need a couple of drops in here but it makes an amazing difference to how fluid it makes it so mix him in and then we'll put it on you know what I forgot to do and I always do it I forgot to put gloves on 10 seconds later so I'll put some gloves on if you get caught out there on the track white vinegar now that cleans your hands up really well. Don't use solvents because it defats your hands um, and it'll go into your skin. And it can also be a cause of getting um, epoxy sensitivity and or solvent sensitivity. They're all the same. Um, you become hypersensitized to chemicals and, and the solvent, because the molecules are much smaller than the pores of your skin, I'll cause it 
to go in through your skin and I, I've stopped cleaning cups and that these measure cups I let them dry out and crack the epoxy out of them I used to wash it out with solvent being the tight ass I am and my hands just using acetone would start to go red after a while and um, really tingly I had to give it up I just don't bother now I just if, if, if I got um, a bit of liquid in there between coats yes I'll wash it out uh, with the boat coat um, but otherwise I just let them dry out or if they're too bad throw them in the bin and start again now notice I'm mixing well I'm scraping around the corners always scrape around your edges pull it up through it because if you're going to unmix the epoxy it'll be in those corners it's another reason to let it go off in the container because that'll uh, let you know very fast if you mix properly because if you've got any unmixed epoxy sitting down in those corners when you pull the dried stuff out you'll know you haven't mixed properly so you need to put more effort into it now I'm just going to show you see how we've got bubble, bugger all air bubbles in that right uh, by me warming your resin a bit you end up with bugger all air bubbles in your epoxy right away we go we're going to coat now you notice I've got some plastic down here I'm going to cheat something chronic today absolutely cheating and and that's the aim of this is to show you how you can take shortcuts so what I'm going to do I'm going to coat inside our bezel first and the bottom of it yeah. and epoxy won't stick to plastic so what it does I'm going to sit this down on the plastic after I coat the bottom of it and who gives a damn if it um, with, with the uh, liquid on the bottom yeah one it'll seal it and two right, we'll, we'll just sit him down and away we go oh, th this is drawing in beautiful you know it um, you now there's a crack around here somewhere I want to fill that first there we go I don't know that I'm filming all this but anyway Oh, look at this. Mm -mm. Look at the grain come out in that. Looks magnificent. No air bubbles. Because what's happening, the timber's cooling down as we go, and it's wanting to draw air bubble air in, not expel it. So there's another tip to keep air bubbles out of your epoxy. If you can warm up stick your job out in the sun, stick it in the microwave for little things like this before you do your first coat you, you'll end up with something that's Mickey Mouse now it, by the time we finish this we'll have something that'll look like varnish and I'll show you a couple other tips when we get into our second and third coat too I might even do it here just to make sure we've got no air bubbles because there are a few really fine ones on the surface but um what I'll do, I'll miss some metho over it in about 10 minutes time notice we've got quite a bit of boat coat left over I'll go and find something to put that on I hate wasting the stuff so I normally have um, packing boxes and you know that we pack all our gear in to go to shows uh, hanging around and um, we'll pack it in that notice we've got some boat coat hanging around the bottom we'll cut that out after it's cured and if you look, there are some air bubbles there, but I'm not worried about them. We'll, we'll hit that with a metho and it'll look like a million dollars. I know that's as easy as it is. I reckon that'll be um, gelled and ready to put our next coat on in 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -mm. I found a generous donor for the boat coat. I'm filling a crack. Now normally I wouldn't pour the boat coat straight in like this, but it's an open crack. I've got very dilute... Um, resin and notice I haven't poured right to the end because the air will go out 
come up through the ends and it'll draw the um, the boat coat down into it and uh, they, actually these these are off a packing crate a beautiful off a packing crate I've sealed that in uh, but dense and really nice pieces of timber I'll probably turn something up out of these they're too good to waste they've got so much character now look at it the colour is going to be magnificent in those might even split them down into something I don't know I haven't thought about it but I hate seeing st good stuff go to waste even if it does come out of a packing crate see how that's drawing down into the timber so uh, look our ends are filled up notice I sealed the end with uh, duct tape and um, epoxy won't stick to plastic duct tape's brilliant for sealing up the ends on things to um, throw your excess resin in so don't waste your leftover resin use it it's too valuable to waste all right I just nuked this uh, piece of timber for a minute it's got some fine cracks and that in it so I'm, I'm in a uh, the bit of leftover um, boat coat I'm going to use it to um, uh, see if it'll draw down in those cracks this is this is just warm to touch so it's not too hot but that's all right it'll help the boat coat go into it now this fella now that we've got him full of resin I'm going to have a go at nuking him as well we'll just stick him in there for a, uh, a minute and warm that up that'll help pull that epoxy down in that crack you might find initially there'll be a heap of air bubbles come out so we'll give it a go and see what see what happens enjoy that baby now next step this fellow's been sitting there for about five minutes now notice, notice how the epoxy's drawn right down in there's hardly any gloss there looks like there could be a few air bubbles there so I'm going to hit it with the metho let's see what happens where's our metho bottle here he is So all we do, we get a metho bottle, oh, a spray bottle, and we whack some metho in it. And the first thing we do, we just want a, a fine mist. We don't want bubbles like that dropping on the surface. So we get it spraying. So it's just putting a fine mist over the surface. And you watch this. And uh, the metho will evaporate off and uh, I think they're fine bits of timber you know just like um, uh, furry timber sticking up there what we're seeing there at present but we'll leave that now well yeah it's still got a bit to go before it's sticky so I'll go and do something else and I'll come back in a little while and we'll whack another coat on that fella oh we've got to get rid of our excess resin Let, let's do that this is starting to thick up, that's already started to gel but I'm hoping that because I warmed this yeah I think it's already started to gel because it's been in concentrated form in the cup notice how it's a lot thicker I don't think that'll penetrate down into there very well but that's alright, just sand it off and start again let's have a look. now I've had this fella in here for a minute yep see, see how we've got a lot of uh, small air bubbles and that's been caused because as you heat something up the air wants to expand and timber's notorious for it as it heats up it uh, releases air and moisture as it cools down it draws in air and moisture so what's happened by warming this we've put a lot of air bubbles into our epoxy um, and, but uh, I, I think uh, I'm just going to run along the top here and break all those fellas, pull them down there we go now as that starts to cool down it'll it'll pull all that down, no, notice how this leveled out and pulled down into the hole it was sitting up above it before so we made the epoxy quite liquid and it'll draw right down in that hole oh look at that, it's gone around the end it's melted around the tape but that's alright we don't care well we can clean that up afterwards 
but all those fine air bubbles and that that come to the surface, I'll pull them out. A little bit of epoxy that's left over, our boat coat, we'll just run that in there. So now we've filled that crack in this timber, and what most people would throw on the fire, we might come back and do something interesting with that down the track and show you what you can do with a bit of timber that yeah, you normally would have discarded. Um, see we've still got air bubbles coming up through that, that's alright, they'll come to the surface and um, again, what do we use? Metho, works a treat. So our brush, we, we can clean that out in our acetone, so I have two containers of acetone, dirty acetone, clean acetone. You put a bit of clean acetone in your mixing cup, and we'll get rid of the rest of this. So you put some clean methyl in your mixing cup, or first off if you've got plenty of dirty stuff, use the dirty stuff. Put some dirty uh, acetone in your mixing cup, wash it out, then empty that into your dirty container, don't put it back in your clean one, you'll contaminate it. Then get a bit of clean acetone, use your brush, and give it a clean, and you can keep using the same container and brush all day. Um, and you're not getting it all over your hands um, and uh, it's a really good way to get maximum use of your containers. So there's a string of air bubbles there, that's where there's a little crack. All those strings of air bubbles are from cracks. Look, you watch some metho on them. I'll just... Look at that. Look, it's like um, rain on a puddle of water. Look at the little air bubbles bursting. It's amazing. Metho is brilliant stuff for getting rid of air out of epoxy. Totally compatible with it. Boat coat loves it. Look at that. Look, the air bubbles are still bursting. We'll come back in about 10 minutes and we'll give that another whack. It'll do the trick. Even this fella. Look at it. Look how it's drawing down into it. The, the boat coat. Right. Look at the air bubbles. Whammo. So there's your learning tip for today. Warm your timber before you coat. Let it sit for a, a little while before you put your boat coat on to let the air and moisture come out of it. And that's probably a mistake I made on that one. I just pulled it out and whacked it straight on. But look how it was dull and boring before. Look how the grains come out. And that's just cut. It hasn't even been finished. I didn't sand that in any way. Just threw the boat coat straight on there. Poured it on. I it, it, oh, love it. You know, the way you can take real basic bits of timber and turn them into works of art. It's, it's magnificent. So nail holes on the side there, where you can fill them up. I love using recycled timber. You know, I hate paying a fortune for good timber. Now, like um, that oak on this, I picked a cupboard up off a uh, set of drawers up off the side of the road. And I cursed when I p pulled it, uh, all the paint off it with paint stripper, with our lemon peel. Because once I did, I realised it was ancient oak. So now, anything I want to do that's uh, good quality oak, boaty bit, out comes the oak. And uh, I use it uh, in all these neat little fittings and stuff uh, for boaty bits. I got sidetracked. An hour and a half later it's almost no longer sticky so it's almost to what we call green. That's alright, I'm going to throw another coat over the top of that and see how we go. Here's our two pieces of timber we put our wiped over boat coat on. Notice it's gone right down the crack and quite a bit of it's oozed out the end but that's alright. We'll, we'll fill that crack up again. And uh, this fellow here, notice how it's drawn right down into it. So we'll put another layer on both and see how they go good way to use your excess. How's that? Two coats of boat coat and it's uh, almost no stickiness after the second coat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that uh, sit in the sun now and cure off fairly fast. Then I'll take it down on my boat and check it's, uh, the size is okay. Then I'll come back and sand it and put at least another coat on it. And I'll probably the next, and that way I can sand it between coats because it's a little bit rough. Looks like the furry's gonna, timber's gone a little bit furry. 
Anyway, let's see how we go. After two coats, after two coats, I've let it dry, taken it down to the boat, make sure it's going to fit in place. Now I've given it a sand, and the reason I let it um, dry and sand it was furry, and it was rough finish. So now I've sanded it, just a 80 grit, uh, and uh, we'll now um, give it another coat. We'll add a little bit of acetone to it, I think. No, metho. We'll add a little bit of metho to the boat coat, and you watch it'll come up looking like varnish. Mm -mm. Okay, this is for another coat of um, boat coat, full strength, no air bubbles, and because it's on a vertical surface like that, it'll pull out pretty well. So that's looking good. That'll become the bezel for my temperature gauge tomorrow. Once it's cured, I'll cut um, off, see it's sitting around the bottom, just cut that off with a sharp bladed knife and it'll look beautiful.